If you do design build work or even enhancement work as a maintenance company, this next video is going to save you tens, but probably hundreds of hours next year. And even better, it's going to save you thousands and maybe even tens of thousands of dollars in mistakes and estimating oversights. It's going to make estimating more consistent and way faster than estimating everything from scratch. So get ready for the work area templates video. What are work area templates? Well, they're kind of like kits or assemblies, as some people often refer to them. They're collections of items, labor, equipment, materials, and subs, all grouped together to accomplish a simple task. You'll find your template section under the item catalog menu in LMN and go down here and hit templates. Now, if you've already watched the production rates video, good. It's a good start. Production weights took an area measurement, for example, or a linear measurement and converted that to hours. Templates will do the same, but they're much more powerful in that you can build all kinds of materials, etc., in templates. Let's take a look and see what we mean. Well, if you're looking at your templates list right now, you'll see we've already set up some samples for you. But even better, you can create your own by clicking the new button. I'm going to open a sample one to walk you through what it looks like, though. I'll work with the paver driveway template because it's a pretty good one. I'll click that template to open it. Now the first page is really simple, it just has a name and a description. The name should be whatever task it is that you're trying to estimate here. Now the items is where most of the power is. The items are a list of all the crews or labor, the equipment, and the materials required to complete this task. In this case, the task is a driveway. So we're going to build in all the items we need to think about when we're estimating a driveway. That includes an install crew, truck and an install trailer, skid steer, disposal bin, fabric, gravel, sand, etc. So if you're wondering, well, how did all these items get in the template? Over here, there's an add items button. We simply click that button and that'll open your database or your item catalog, your labor, equipment, materials and subs and other. So those are the same things we covered here earlier. In other videos, we walked you through how to build your crews and your equipment and your material list. Well, all I'm doing to build a template is pulling items from our item lists. So I would start with labor, and if I needed to add an install crew, I would just click the plus button. That install crew is now going to be added to my paver driveway. And then I'd go to equipment, and I'd do the same for the equipment I want to estimate, and then I'd go to materials and write out all those. Now we're gonna close this down and I'm gonna get rid of that crew because we've already got a template set up in our sample. Once you've got all your items in here, now is where some of the real template magic happens. So first of all, make sure you add every single item that you need to think about when you're estimating, in this case, a driveway. I may not need sealer for most of our driveways, but I'm gonna put sealer in my template so that my estimator never forgets to think about it. Same with a delivery charge. Quite often I might not need or might not be eligible for a delivery charge, but if it's in here, I know that my estimator will think about it every time they build a bid for a driveway. And that's what we want. When we're actually estimating a job, we could delete the sealer or we could set the quantity to zero. There's quite a few ways that we could get rid of it so it's not actually in that estimate anymore. The point is I wanna make sure everything here included on my template is everything I want my estimators to remember to think about when they're bidding a driveway. That way, we don't have any forgotten or missed costs. And when you go to do a job and you realize, shoot, we did forget something, you can always take that something that you forgot and stick it in your template so that it never gets forgotten again. That's where you'll start to see you saving thousands or possibly even tens of thousands over time as your estimators have a real turnkey system for estimating all the different types of tasks you do. So again, your item list should be all the things you need to think about when you're estimating whatever task this is. Now, sometimes it can get a little tricky. For instance, the pavers themselves. I'd have a ton of templates if I had to build a template for each and every paver type and color. Same thing with a garden template. The plants, the flowers, the shrubs, they're gonna change on every single garden. So you likely don't want to include specific plants, or in this case, a specific paver. Here, I've kind of skirted the issue by adding a paver to my template that has no name, color, or cost. I just created a generic paver in my materials list and said specify name, color, cost, and I set the cost to zero. So what'll happen is when we drag this paver driveway into an actual bid, 
The paver placeholder will be there. And my estimator can just change the name and description to reflect the actual paver type and color. And then they'll change the unit cost to reflect the actual cost of that paver. Or if they wanted, they could, when they're estimating, actually pull in the regular paver and delete this placeholder. Either way, it's a nice way of making sure that the paver's in the template, but you don't need 50 templates, one for every single paver type. Once you've got your items in here, next thing I might advise you to do is to order your items. We find that by ordering the items in the order of operations they're gonna be used in the field, helps operations and your foreman organize their job site better. I wanna make sure my material list is listed in the order the foreman is gonna to need to stage them on the job, that way it'll help them make sure they're ordering or prepping their materials on time. Once you've got that set up, over here you'll see a production rate. These are really handy. Production rates, again, are gonna calculate the amount of one of these materials, depending on, say, an area measurement. Let's take a look at example, it's probably easier. Gravel, three quarter inch crushed. I'm gonna need a base for my driveways. And assuming a driveway has so many inches of base, I know I'm gonna need so many inches of gravel. So we're gonna slide over here to the production rate calculator. And what I can set up here is a production rate that says every 100 square feet of driveway requires 3.7 ton of gravel. And I could make a note in the comments if I really wanted about uh, based on a uh, 12 inch base or whatever it is that you have for your base in your geographic area. So again, these production rates may change from our sample based on a specific climate, a specific base depth. If you're way down south, well, maybe your base is less. However, by entering it in here and by clarifying how you arrived at that, now when an estimator is bidding a job, they'll simply need to enter the square footage of the driveway and LMN will calculate how many tons of gravel they need to build into their bid. Pretty simple. Same thing with things like spikes or edge. Now you'll notice there's not just one measurement for the driveway. Each and every item is going to have a per measurement. And that's because not everything can be measured in square feet. Edge restraint is a great example. Gravel we could measure in square feet because we know the depth and we know the square footage area. But edge restraint can't be based on square footage. That wouldn't help us at all. We need to know the linear feet. So rather than having a whole bunch of templates, each item has its own driver for um, units. So here when we're working with uh, edge restraint, we can say every eight linear feet, we need one eight foot length of edge restraint. Or if we're talking about spikes, for every 1.25 linear feet, we need a spike. And again, that'll help us calculate how many spikes we need based on the linear footage of the edge of the driveway. Now we could use production rates for all kinds of things. Disposal bin, I know every so many square feet of clean fill, I'm gonna need a disposal bin. So I can simply say, at our depth of excavation, and again, that may differ depending on where you're watching this video from, but I know every 300 square feet, I'm gonna to need to order a bin. And that sets up all our materials and calculations. So what this gives you now is something really, really powerful for estimating. Your estimators have a complete list of all the items they need to think about when they're estimating. And even better, all they need to do is enter, say, the square footage of the driveway or the linear feet of the edge of the driveway when they're building a bid. And LMN will automatically calculate the quantity that they need. And of course, this is just a template. When you add this to an estimate, you can add things, you can remove things, you can even change the names of things to customize it for that specific bid. But the point is that everybody starts notes, one consistent estimating starting point. So that's all great. Makes estimating way faster, far more accurate, way less forgotten items. But let's take it one step further with notes. So clicking on the notes tab is where I can define or predefine customer descriptions. So what this is, is the description that's gonna come out on our proposal for our customer. Now again, we can customize this description each and every estimate, but it's in here in the template so that every time I add this template to a job, these descriptions already show up ready to go for the customer. It means A, I save all kinds of time typing because it's already set up for me once, but B, and maybe even more importantly, that all my estimators are using the same professional description for whatever task I'm estimating. That way I know that no matter who I'm sending out to sell a job to a customer, they're all giving that customer that same professional presentation of the data that we're gonna estimate. 
Now let's take that another step further, and this one may be even more important, crew notes. So what you can also define is crew notes for this task. When we go do a driveway, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have a great list of crews and equipment and materials required for the driveway, and that'll help the crew plan everything properly. But we're not gonna put everything in here. How do I make sure that they don't forget their marking chalk or their rake or broom or four foot level? Well, what I can do is build a tool checklist in my crew notes. That way, when I'm handing over the crew a job planner, after we sell a job, not only will they have a list of their hours, their equipment and all the materials, but they'll also have this little checklist here to make sure they have all the tools they need for that job on the truck before they leave in the morning. And that's critical because every time we have to go back to the shop or back to a vendor to get tools, not only are we losing hours in the job, but we're losing opportunity to finish work. And that means we're losing revenue. Now I can also take tool checklist a little bit further and build installation specs if you want. If you want to describe to your crew, maybe the order of operations or the key points in the install, we can do that as well if you think it's necessary. And if you have Spanish crews, by all means, you can insert Spanish instructions in here as well. You'll have to do the translation, but most browsers nowadays will do that for you. Now the last tab up here is categories and categories just allows you to have this template show up in your certain categories of estimating. So if you're using categories because this is a driveway, maybe I want to add this to my precast category and that way anytime I'm estimating precast stuff, this template would show up there. Click save and you'll save your template. Let's jump ahead now and preview what it looks like when you're actually using a work area template when you're estimating. Here I've got an estimate, and don't worry, you'll get lots more information about estimating in those videos. Just wanna show you what the work area template looks like. When I'm estimating with a work area template, here's my simple steps. I'm gonna go add work area. I'm gonna type in driveway, or that'll be my description of whatever it is I'm estimating. In this case, it's a driveway. Next, once we've created the driveway, we're gonna add the items to it. Now this is where templates make this really fast. Instead of adding items and having to remember, okay, I need a crew and I need equipment and I need materials and having to pick all those individually, we simply go to templates and we go paver driveway. By clicking that button, all the things that we put in the template automatically come into our estimate. Now I'll get that item list out of the way and I'll deal with these things now. All I have to do now is quantify everything. So by clicking the calculator, that's going to open up the production rate calculator that we set in the estimate. So here, for example, on the labor, it says every, I need one man hour for every 11 finished square feet. So if this driveway was 1,200 square feet, it says approximately we'd need 109 man hours to get this work done. Now, of course, you can round that to whatever it, it is you want. If I want to round it up to, say, 120, no problem. I can change it, but the calculator starts me off with a, a good, reasonable estimate for all my estimators. Then I'll put the number of days for the truck and the skid steer, and maybe I need a disposal bin. So again, I'll put in 1,200 square feet. It calculates that. Fabric, we'll put in 1,200 square feet. Gravel. And I'll work my way through the others. All right, jumping ahead, I've now set quantities and double check the cost for all the things I need to estimate. Now, let's say here I've got this sealer, but we don't need it for this job. Well, the default quantity is zero, so it's actually not putting in any sealer anyway. But if I wanna just get rid of it, so it doesn't even show up in my item list, I'll just go over here to the delete button and I'll remove it from this particular job. Now that's it, I've done all the work I need to estimate. In about 60 seconds, I've actually built a whole estimate for a driveway. Even better, if I go to the client notes, you'll see I've already got my client proposal notes set up. Or if I go to the crew notes, I've already got specifications and checklists for crews set up. So when I go to go print and generate my customer proposal, I not only have a really accurate estimate for the driveway, but I've also got driveway, a price, and all my customer notes in there. And then we'll show you the rest of the terms and conditions when we get to the estimating video. So let's just quickly review 
why you want to use work area templates. So number one, they act as an item checklist for the things you're estimating. That'll eliminate forgotten costs and really improve your estimator consistency and your training. Number two, you got calculators in there. Use them. They'll make it easy to convert a measurement of an area into a quantity of materials or labor that you're going to need to get the job done. Number three, you can template your client notes. That'll make sure that you'll boost your professionalism and make sure all your estimators are presenting the client with the same professional description of what you're doing to improve your close rates. And number four, use crew notes. They'll reduce mistakes, they'll reduce forgotten items, and better yet, they'll eliminate all kinds of wasted time missing those mistakes and forgotten items. If you got any questions, hit us up on live chat, check out goelmn.com slash help, or go to advice at goelmn.com and send us an email. Any of those three channels, we'll get back to you as quick as we can and help you build your templates to save you as much time and money as possible this year. Thanks for watching.